Here's a step-by-step -step video on how to add a tachometer to a 1974 VW bus in that third empty spot on the instrument cluster. First step will be to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. So when the battery is disconnected, then we'd come here to the fuse box. It's really difficult, if not impossible, to um, attach wires to the top of these fuses without taking the box off the uh, its mounting here. So there's two screws on here. And second one here. Now you can tip the box back, move it a little bit to gain access to these um, connections at the so top. Actually, as I pull this back further, there's an empty spade connector on that second from the right, number 11. Okay, so to remove the dash, um, these lever ends just wiggle off of their uh, metal counterparts. So I just took that one off. Let's see if this will come off here. Here's another one. Okay, so next will be to undo the speedometer cable at the back of the speedometer. Okay, next would be to undo these four screws. However, I've noticed mine just pops out, so that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this pod off without disconnecting the all those wires at the back. So this is a six millimeter uh, socket. And then next we'll do the upper one up here, a little, a little easier to get to. Okay, and that releases the blanking pod cover there. Okay, here's the blank I just took out. Here's the new tachometer, how it comes packaged. It's got this fixing ring on the back, the glass will be sandwiched in front of that. And there's the plug for that harness that came with it. Okay, and then you'll notice these are the screws that held the blank in place. And the holes in this fixing ring are just a little bit too small. They don't allow that screw to pass through. So I'm going to have to drill those holes out just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm back with the tack with the larger holes drilled in the fixing ring. So we'll see now if we can get this in place. want to look from the front and make sure that I'm satisfied with that alignment. Okay, so the tachometer comes with this wiring harness. Okay, well, the I plugged that in. Okay, this is the back of the instrument panel. There's the speedometer. What I'm showing you here is this circle of ground connections. That red, one with the red connector is the one I just added from the speedometer. I had to add about four inches of wire because it wouldn't reach, but that's where I chose to ground. I've attached the green uh, wire from the tachometer to this inline 3 amp fuse, which is attached to the second from the right um, circuit, which is 
the switch 12 volt source. Okay, so for the signal wire, you've got to get a wire from the dash here back to the engine. Uh, you could run an extra wire, a new wire. I'm going to use the test wire that comes from the back of the um, defrost, rear defrost switch. There is a blue and white wire that runs from that switch back to the test socket in the engine compartment. And if we disconnect it from this um, rear defrost, it will not affect the function of the defrost. So I'm going to go under the dash here and show you where that wire is. So it's the blue and white wire yeah, that attaches to the back of that switch. So I'm just going to disconnect it. Okay, so in pulling that off, it's actually on a piggyback with another wire. So now I will disconnect it from this piggyback here. Okay. So that frees up that blue and white wire. I'll put this piggyback back on the back of the switch here. Okay, so here I'm attaching the red or the white and blue wire from the van or from the bus to this red and blue wire from the back of the speedometer or tachometer. Okay, back at the engine bay, here is that blue and white wire, the other end of it. So I'm going to tap into that with this tap it connector. If you're not familiar with these, um, you see you, it just taps in to the existing wire and then you add the second wire in. Unscrew this. It's got that needle in there that will puncture the insulation of the blue and white wire and then when I screw that back in place it will hold it securely. Alternatively, um, just while I'm here, you could find something to plug into that. You can see um, if I wiggle this one. The, this is the connector here. If you found a connector that might push into that or even pull that out of the back of that test socket, you could do that, but I'm just going to use this tap instead. Okay, so I stripped the other end and then these threaded, this threaded end will just thread into top of this connector okay and that's what that tapped in connector looks like in place now and then we'll attach the other end of this wire to the negative side of the coil here's the negative side so I need to add another um, splitter onto that this one off. There we go. And then we'll add this one back on. Okay, so I just routed that uh, wire. I wrapped it around the um, piping here for the fuel vapors to kind of keep it up out of the way and then dropped it down here to the negative side of the coil. 
Okay, so this um, blue wire here, I've spliced onto the end of the red and white wire. It's gonna be the illumination wire. And I'm going to tap into this red and gray wire here. It's on the uh, end of the circuit, the illumination circuit. So there's the bulb holder, and then this is the last wire. I'm gonna tap into that. That way I can use my dimmer switch to dim the illumination on the tachometer when the rest of the headlight or when the rest of the instrument cluster dims. If you can see that. Okay. Okay, so while I've got access, easy access to the back of the instrument cluster, I'm going to replace the bulbs with this 2723 from Sylvania. It's uh, the 2.3 watt. The factory bulbs are like 1.2, I believe. Okay, so the red and gray wire here is the, for the illumination. For the instrument cluster, I've got a hold of the bulb holder and you have to rotate it 90 degrees and pull it out. And then the bulb just pulls out here. And then the new one pops in. So one tip on reinstalling these um, lever handles, I found it easier to leave the dash out of its hole a little bit so that you can slide these slots over to line up with the uh, metal levers behind the dash. Otherwise it's difficult to push those metal levers over to get them where you can get at them. Okay, so the fuse box is back in place. Lever handles are back in place. The speedometer cable is rehooked up. Time to test it. Moment of truth. Nice. And then the illumination. And if I dim it. So there is a slight difference in color. I think a person could maybe put some kind of a resistor or rheostat in line with that tachometer illumination, but I think I'm gonna leave it like that. It doesn't seem overly bright, um, especially since we put it in series with those other bulbs. I think that reduced some of the wattage that was headed towards the tachometer illumination. Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck.